for now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. You know, friends, so much is happening in the world. And we're so happy that we can share around the world the basis of where it's all going, going to go and where it all came from and what's happening right now. Jack Van Hippy, the walking Bible, can connect everything for us. We so appreciate that, Jack. And memorize but, the whole book. And boy, what a feast. First of all, there's a statement that really shocked me. It was given by Kenneth Abramowitz. And uh, it was in an interview that he said this. I'm going to ask Jack about it. We're basically in World War III. You know, that's quite a statement, friends. Don't you agree? Have you ever read anything like that? We're basically in World War III. Do you think, Jack, that what's happening in the world is leading to it, or are we already in it? Rexella, as everyone already knows, I laid in a hospital bed and I was unconscious for many, many weeks. Faced death three different times. But God brought me back. I'm back. And I'm going to straighten up a lot of things. I said last week, and I repeat, the Wall Street Journal, what a great paper. I had an article about four months, five months ago and said, here are the nations that are going to fight World War III. Man, I read the Bible. I said, Rexella, look, you've heard me preach this message in 50 different nations. Yes. And they are mentioning the exact nations that I've been preaching. Yes, we are right at the time when World War III is about to break out. And I have been called to be God's final prophet by the Holy Spirit. I had the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For the morning, as he came and said, you have been appointed the final prophet to tell the world about the imminent, imminent, immediate return of Christ to set up the glorious kingdom of God on earth when heaven is moved to earth. What? Heaven is going to be on earth forever. It will never die. When we come back after the resurrection, those bodies will live forever, forever, and ever. Never a few of service. All our lovers together again. Wow. I'm going to tell you much about that in the days ahead. But no, we are headed for World War III. Every nation we're going to talk about in a day is waiting right now to get ready. Well, you know, I think he has reason to say this. Because as I said to our gentleman here today, uh, Israel is really walking a tightrope. I don't know, it's so very, very difficult to think about how she can continually be under threats of her neighbors, the Arab neighbors. Well, the Palestinians are against her also, Israel, right now, because they're launching burning kites and balloons into southern Israel. So take a look at what Israel did. Israel strikes launchers of burning kites from Gaza. Well, they're, they're getting back to, at them for doing this. And then the Israeli Defense Force prepares for threat of 5,000 terror kites. <laughs> They're taking over the skies, it, back and forth and back and forth with these kites. They're burning kites, kind of a threat. And again, Israeli Defense Force accuses Hamas of being behind Gaza fire kite attacks. That's well, four on kites. All right, kites. With bombs then, on them. Something else. I was just shocked when Jack gave me this, the drone. The sky will never be the same because That's of deadly. the drones. Drones are everywhere. Get used to it. My, oh my, I couldn't believe that. What is prophecy? It is history written in advance. God knows everything. And so he put the prophecies as he knew what would occur in the latter days. And he's got this verse in the Bible. As the birds flying, so will the Lord defend Jerusalem. Mm. It's going to be from space as the birds fly. Wow. 
everything we've mentioned to you so far, the kites, the balloons, everything. And Rick, all that. There's more now. We're, yes. we're going to get into the atom bombs and everything. Yes. That's also the, like the birds flying. Yeah, well, Israel is not asleep, friends. She's really preparing. Here we are again. Israel preparing for war with Iran. Well, the ones said we are in World War Three, uh, and now they say we are preparing for war. Iranian official will unveil new air defense system soon. Well, they know that Iran is doing it. And that's Israel Persia, is doing it. Ezekiel 38, 5, just right. like the Wall Street Journal said. Erdogan blasts world silence on Israel's tyranny. Of course, that is the president of Turkey. So there you got and Iran. And that is in the Bible. Again, one of the Bible signs. So there you got Iran and Turkey against Israel. They're preparing. Netanyahu speaks up. Netanyahu is a terrorist, and Israel is a terrorist state. Oh, can you imagine that the Turkey president could say this about President Netanyahu? Lebanese foreign minister, Israel will lose a war against us. Lose. Boo, oh, baloney, man. baloney. God's on the side of Israel. Well, Amen. Jack, that was my question. You're answering it already. Will they lose? Here you've got Turkey, you've got Iran, you've got all these countries who hate Israel. They're going to come down on her. But Israel believes that she can win, I believe. Do you believe they'll lose, Jack? I got a book that said she's going to be the most victorious nation in the world. She's going to take over the world. It's going to become the Judea Christian world empire forever and forever and forever. No. These Muslims are going to be the losers. When that battle takes place in the Middle East, and someone said to the other, oh, what's wrong with this Trump, this dumb president we've got? He's, he's a smart man. I got 16 doctor's degrees, and he knows everything I know and more. And he's a vice president. It's a born-again Christian, has Bible studies, knows this book backwards and forwards, and maybe... Trump heard it from him. This guy made a speech for Netanyahu. And they had a standing ovation in the Knesset. They said, it's never been anything like it. They praise this man over any man that's ever spoken there. I have no doubt that he said, Israel is going to be the winner. Put the embassy there. Trump did so. Christian said, to me, "What is wrong with that president? He's, he's still no, he isn't. He knows the Bible better than you do, lady. What? Yeah. You know when Christ returns, where he's coming? Rome? No. New York? No. Israel. He sets up his kingdom there, and Rick is going to talk about that wonderful kingdom again, as she did last week." It sets up when God removes heaven to earth and sets it up right there in Israel, the land he loves. The Jew he calls his fiancé. The Jew he calls his wife. The Jew he says, I'll give Israel an everlasting name. That is God the Father saying it. He chose Jesus to be born in a Jewish virgin. Everything about him is love for the Jew. And I've got love for the Jew and always will. My uncle Franz died in a concentration camp with Jews because he stood against Adolf Schickelguru or Hitler. When he marched into Belgium and he said, I stand with the Jews, and they beheaded him. I have a warm spot in my heart for Israel. And they're going to suffer, but not like the rest of the world. Now, who's behind all of this? Islam, 57 denominations. And you know what the Ten Commandments happens to be? I've only got four. You know what ours are? Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie, thou bear false words, and thou shalt not covet. Money loving. The love of money is the root of all evil, which was well some coveted after. They've erred from the faith. Oh, they couldn't get enough. Erred from the faith, and they pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Get rid of some of that money. 
give you tithes and offerings. I've got the greatest missionary thing going now, the largest in history. I'm preaching starting two weeks from now to 7 billion, 600 million citizens of the world weekly for the next three years. That's the population of the world. Yeah, 7 billion, 600 million. There's never been a mission organization larger. This is the biggest. And if you give your tithes and offerings, I promise you that Rick and I will never take a dime for salary. We don't want it. We'll live in our books, sales. I will give my salaries to my people for my book sales. Every dime you sent will be used to win souls for Jesus. You can't have a better deal. You can't even do that laying it in your church secretaries. How many are getting saved in your church? I'm asking God for one billion souls for Christ in the next three years. Wonderful. And you can be part of that. Quit robbing from God. Christian, when is the, long, the last time you gave 10% of your income? Oh, you don't do it? God says in Malachi 3.8, you have robbed me. You're thieves. How? Oh, in tithes, 10% and all. You're cursed with a curse. I didn't say that. God said it. Then he goes on to say, if you do tithe and give offerings, I will open the windows of heaven and shower you with financial blessings like you won't be able to contain it. What a deal. God said that. And I'm saying it too. Anything God gives you above that I got from my own books, videos. I am not in this for money. I am in it for souls and to help you get the soul in his crown to lay at the feet of Jesus. Please believe me. I've lived a humble life. I've worn the same suit for 312 shows. Seven years. $19.95 coat. Got it when mama was dying, your mommy. I never wanted things. I'm not in it for things. These guys with their jets, God forgive them. God get them out of the ministry. God give you enough sense to quit sending your money to them. Help me. Souls, a billion of them for Jesus. Again, start listening to TV. I'm going to be on this nation's television sets and all the worlds reaching every human being weekly as God's final prophet chosen by the one who created me the baptism of the Holy Spirit you know who it is the third member of the Trinity who oh, I love I spent the last 12 months with him you can hear much now as I get into the stations of the world Two weeks from now. All right, Jack, we're going to be getting back to what we've been talking about, uh, things happening in the air. I was deeply surprised, greatly surprised, at really what's going on up there. But I first want to say we're going to include a country right up front who are re they're really uh, focusing on what's happening in space also, and that's Russia. Don't forget, Jack has a wonderful video out, Russia, World War III, and Armageddon. You know, will Russia really be a part of Armageddon? All your questions about World War III are answered on here. So be sure and write to us, or uh, actually we'd love to just hear from you and know that you're watching the program. I'd love to hear from you. Just write to us, too, and uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have about this Russia, World War III, and Armageddon. Now going on with Russia. Russia warns against Trump's alarming plans for U.S. space domination. Now, notice that. Space, space domination. Putin, new weapons will maintain Russia's might for decades. Oh, what it, what's he talking about? Tehran, Beijing to boost nuclear cooperation. Nuclear. U.S. Commerce Secretary calls China 2025 plan frightening. And again, threat of nuclear weapons used growing United Nations warns. 
Israel said to fortify nuclear reactors against missile strikes. Missiles, and missiles. Israel, oh. U.S. troops trained together to counter missile threats. Oh. Oh, space. All right, take a look at this one. National Security Advisor, U.S. ready for possible space wars. So much happening out It's all here. Oh, 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 wait a minute. And again, the United States accelerating development in its own invincible hypersonic weapons. You know, so many other countries now are focusing on space, how to dominate space. Uh, Jack, is this looking to the coming of the Lord? Is this in the Bible? just previous to the time the Lord returns. Can it be found in the Bible? Yes. Oh, please, folks, I'm going to move it quickly here, but listen carefully. Ezekiel 38 and 39. There's a war coming, the bloodiest in history. And God gives the very nations that I said were in the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Number one, Russia. The word of the Lord came in to be saying, Son of man, set your face against God, the leader of country. What country? Harash. Let's see it in the Greek, Russian English. The chief Russian prince of Moscow and Tobolsk, Mishak and Tobol there. But you can't miss who it is. Who joins with him? Over there in the book of Revelation, China. The kings of the east and Russia head up the armies, millions of them, from the two nations alone. The other nations, Turkey, Dagarma, Persia, Iran, Egypt, is Egypt. And you just can't stop when you see it. It's there, Syria. Mm. Pushed by Russia in that war to be with them. Uh, it's all heading up, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be brutal. Now, what is all this about this space war? Psalm 97 3 of fire devours before all these armies. Isaiah 66 15, the Lord will come with fire. Ezekiel 20 47, the flaming flame shall not be quenched. Joel 2 verse 3 of fire devours before the Russian Chinese army. I don't know how we could go. Zephaniah 1 18, the whole land filled with fire. Now look, guys, 4 1, the day comes that it'll burn like an oven. Revelation 87, the third part of the trees was burned. All the green grass was burned. But you want a shocker? 2 Peter 3 10. The day of the Lord, Armageddon, shall come as a thief in the night. Catch him by surprise. Why? The fires of atomic weaponry will shoot down them while they're asleep. Now, how do I know what it is? It says, the elements shall melt with fur and heat. Go to the library tomorrow say, I want to study the atomic bomb. They'll take you to the word elements. For the elements make up an atomic bomb. <clears throat> what did you say? 2,000 years ago, God, the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth and the works thereof shall be burned. But Israel is going to live because Israel's got all the latest mechanism. America's going to join them. They've got the supersonic weapons. They're going to wipe out everything Russia, China, and the rest of the world has. And Israel is going to be victorious. 200 million are going to die. Those are mainly the 57 Muslim nations, not people. That will be the communists of Russia and China. They're going to be gone. 
who's left his people, the mm. Jews and Christians. Why? Because Christ comes just when the final battles are going to take, and it's called Armageddon, the final battle. Revelation 16, 16. And at that moment, the second coming of Christ happens. The rapture has happened seven years before, and we went up. Seven years later, are coming down. And the armies of heaven, all the believers who've been there for centuries, millions and millions come. And they stop the battle of Armageddon and all the enemies from all the nations are finished. And they stand there alone. The kingdom of God. I'm not going to have a excel accord this week. Thy kingdom come. And it ends with... And to him be the glory, the power, forever. And God is going to move heaven to earth. Heaven's going to be changed? Yes. Quote that with your family today. Together, it's, it's exciting. And that goes there. How long? Forever. How long is forever? Forever. We can't die anymore. We've been resurrected from the dead. We've gone up into the rapture. We've received our new bodies. All our spirits live forever. Now the spirits that have been there, because absent from the body, present of the Lord, now call for their bodies. And it's called the resurrection of the dead. And it's 1 Corinthians 15, 51. I show you a mystery. We shall not all be dead. But we shall all be made alive. Every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits. His resurrection. Then they which are his that is coming. The rapture. And then all the world. The bodies are in the ground. But the spirit has never died. When they closed their eyes, we sat there and we bawled at those funerals. What for? They're coming back to life. We're going to be with them. Everyone you've ever known and loved is going to be there. Oh, that song, friends. I've known and loved long ago. How can they wait? Parents, children, babies. Every one of them that died there. They sat there and wept their eyes. There used to be a sect in America that Celebrate his funerals. They said, they were the Lord. <laughs> Man, that's the way it should be. Joy. And now that place of joy with millions of them come back. The armies of the world. Gone. War is ended forever. Disease is gone. Death is finished. Joy, joy, joy. I said it last week, I repeat it. Everything is there with because all the Trinity has come. The Father is the possessor of the kingdom. Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords who rules it for the Father. And the Holy Spirit is there and he's called, do you know what? The blessed paraclete. It's not like paraclete, paraclete. And the meaning is comforter. So joy galore and the nine point fruit of the Spirit, which I said last week and I'll repeat is there. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, forever, forever. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. And the Holy Spirit, August 13th, a year ago, said, you are the final prophet to say that's about to happen. Christ returned to the earth and set up that glorious kingdom. And you know what? I want to quote one other verse. How should you feel about it? Listen to this verse. Looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you beat that? And if you get saved today, 
you'll be ready. What a deal. You know, that's quite a statement, isn't it? If you will get saved today, you'll be with him. I know that Jack has really poured out his heart here, saying how close the coming of the Lord is. And, you know, even if we didn't think about the coming of the Lord, we never know what tomorrow will hold. I could be taken tomorrow in one way or another. So could you. We need to be ready. And there is a way that we can be ready to know that when we close our eyes, we'll be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? Have you ever asked yourself that question? If I died now, where would I go? Oh, please, say this wonderful prayer with Jack, accepting Jesus as your Savior. He'll forgive you of anything, everything that you don't want there in your life. And all of us have some things, don't we? We've done some things wrong. There's not one perfect person on earth. You want your life clean. The blood of Christ will do that. Amen. Will you please pray this prayer with Jack, saying, Lord, I know you died for me. Come into my heart and be my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for dying for me. Jack, will you please pray that prayer? His name says, if you believe Jesus is the Son of God, you'll burn in hell forever. God forgive them. What does the Holy Spirit say? The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth Amen. from all sin. Amen. Name your sin. As low, as dirty, as vile as could be. That blood is powerful enough to blot out every stain of anything you've ever done that's been wrong. Thank you. Gotta love, yes. Not that it'll keep you from hell. When punishment is deserved, you'll get it. You'll only be lost because you refuse to be forgiven. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. But what are you going to do? Who shall believe it on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You got the everlasting life if you believe. What happens if you don't? Two verses farther, John three eighteen. He that believeth in Christ is not condemned. He that believeth not believe it not is condemned already and one more verse 36 he that believeth on the son has everlasting life the moment you do it right now if you pray it he that believeth not shall not see life but the wrath of God abides on eternal hell will the God love to send anyone to hell. The God of love will save anyone who wants to be saved. You choose where you want to go by accepting or rejecting Christ right now. Father, I accept this Jesus into my heart. Thank you, Christ, for your shed blood. Thank you that I can be saved forever. That every sin I've ever committed can be wiped away right now. My drinking, my drunkenness, my drugs, my adultery, my fornication, my homosexual gone thank you Jesus I accept what you've done for me yes. now come in my heart Jesus I pray this in your holy name amen 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 did you pray that prayer please write to me and I'll send you this wonderful little book of first steps in a new direction I say it every week and I trust that you will begin a walk that you've never known before first steps in a new direction. And don't forget, also write, and we'll be happy to send you Russia, World War III, and Armageddon. Jack's talked about it today. Yeah, we preached it today, but preached it the first time 60 years ago, and this is the original copy. This is the beginning of my legacy. Get it for what you're going to save as you get all my things coming the next three years. All right. And we will be seeing many of you on television coming up very, very shortly. I want to leave you with this wonderful thought. God speaks to all those who take time to listen. We need to listen to the voice of the Lord and read the Word every day. Look forward to being with you again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.